Hi everyone, so yat eh, um, thank you for coming. I'm really excited to get started for our SAR intern takeover. Um, we're just waiting for Emily to join the live stream. Um, oh, she just joined, okay. And Yay, hi. Hello. I'm so happy that was pretty painless and seamless. <laughs> Second time's a charm, so they say. Yes, exactly. So hi everyone who's watching. Uh, my name is Shandine Brown, and today I'm going to be interviewing my fellow Anne Ray 2020-2021 intern, Emily Santana. Um, we're doing, this is the second part of our intern takeover. We already did one with me, which you can check out on our Instagram feed. Um, and yeah, so we're just going to be getting to know Emily and chatting about what life is kind of like here at SAR, the IARC. So um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to comment. I see that Ian already commented. Awesome. Um, I'm going to be trying to pay as much attention as I can to the comments. Um, and we really want to make this interactive. So feel free to join in. Um, so Emily, do you want to introduce yourself really quickly? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so Santanam Chikasha Saya. Um, hello, my name is Emily Santanam and I am Chickasaw as well as Choctaw um, and South Indian. Um, I have, like Shandine was saying, um, we joined this internship program at the School for Advanced Research. Um, it started back in September. Um, and before that, I worked for my tribe, the Chickasaw Nation, at our Chickasaw Cultural Ooh. Center in Oklahoma. Um, and that was back. Um, yeah, I worked there for three and a half years, roughly. Um, I graduated from Stanford back in 2016. Um, and after that, I interned at Yellowstone um, at their museum collections and realized I was really interested and fascinated by um, the world of museums and collections and what those look like in the 21st century. Um, so that brought me to this current internship. and I'm really excited to be here. Yes, amazing. And so now I will introduce Emily and talk about how great she is again. Um, so like she, this is just going to be a repeat, but like she said, she's a citizen of the Chickasaw Nation and comes to us from Oklahoma, um, where she was a curator at the Chickasaw Cultural Center for three and a half years. Um, she earned her Bachelor of Arts in Anthropology from Stanford University in 2016 and also worked in the realm of creative writing. She is primarily interested in museum curation and in 2018 she worked on an ex exhibit at the Chickasaw Cultural Center that featured works here from the IARC and was titled Sculpting Culture Southeast and Southwest Native Pottery. So she's really awesome and intelligent and smart and I'm really excited to chat. <laughs> <laughs> also because we haven't seen each other in person in a while. I know, yeah. I didn't even hear how your Thanksgiving went, but that's a conversation for yeah. another time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So at the IRC, we're kind of social distancing um, and we haven't seen our coworkers. So it's kind of a good chance for me to catch up with you too. So first, my first question is, why did you decide to apply for the Anne Ray internship? Sure, yeah. Um, I think that's a really important question, um, and especially something that I think fledgling museum professionals um, should be aware of is sort of uh, the importance of um, working in and sort of learning about a variety of museums um, and collecting repositories, because I think the practices within different museums really can vary in terms of um, you know, the staffing or the training that they provide, or even like, I guess, like the ethos behind their mission statements. Um, and so with that in mind, I was really excited to come and intern here at the Indian Arts Research Center, just because um, they work so strongly in terms of um, collaborating with communities um, and sort of prioritizing um, the voices of peoples who have historically been underrepresented when it comes to um, the ways in which they're able to sort of interact with pieces from their communities. Um, and so I was really excited to sort of see how the Indian Arts Research Center um, leads those community-based collection reviews 
um, and also just stewards uh, such an amazing diverse collection um, of southwestern native arts um, so yeah i think it's just really important to sort of broaden um, experience when it comes to the museum world and um, also maybe try to seek out different kinds of mentorship um, and I know that's been a really strong part of um, this ANRE internship is all of the different mentors that we have in terms of um, Molly in collections and Jan in registration and Felicia in education. So um, yeah, we're able to sort of learn from a wide variety um, of people in the museum field. And I think that's super important. Yeah, I totally agree. And um, I'm assuming at your previous job, you also had a lot of that museum to cultural connection? Yes, yeah, that's very true. Um, so I moved into Oklahoma uh, for that position. I'd never lived in Oklahoma before. Um, so being able to live um, in and around where our headquarters are currently based was really important. Um, and also just being able to work with so many um, Chickasaw professionals within that space was really important and really exciting. Um, so it was sort of the ideal foundation for then coming into um, a position like this. Yeah, and I think in a non-pandemic world, we'd be getting a lot of that, which is super important. Um, I think both of us really value that community connection. Right, yeah. I you know we're definitely working to, um, you know, make those kinds of connections virtually as far as we can. Um, I'm looking forward to sort of seeing how future collection reviews can take place within the vaults. Um, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see how that pans out. And as of now, I mean, our video uh, meetings and sort of uh, being able to touch base with our um, staff has been really helpful and um, supportive. Yeah, and I think that transitions well into my next question, which is how has the internship been so far? And also how has your experience in Santa Fe been? Sure, um, well, the internship's been really great. It's been um, a little bit different given how COVID has sort of um, put different constraints in terms of what we're able to do um, hands-on within the collections. Um, but the first couple of weeks that we were here, we were working quite a bit hands-on within the Indian Arts Research Center. Um, and that was really exciting. Uh, we were able to help with different um, mount making projects in the lab and um, assist with sort of like reorganizing some of the ceramics um, and pottery and learning how to, you know, check them for cracks and properly clean them. Um, so there was a lot of that hands-on work. That was so much I fun. Know. <laughs> It, it seems like years ago, but it was like, yeah, maybe a month ago we were able yeah. to do that. Um, but yeah, since sort of switching gears and making sure that everyone's been staying at home, um, it's been it's been pretty uh, useful in terms of, um, I guess, the diversity of projects, uh, just in terms of filling the day with um, a little bit of education here and doing some writing and working hands-on and um, building some mounts for um, pieces from the education collection. So um, it's been really great in terms of sort of um, allowing us to dabble in all the different fields um, that I guess the Indian Arts Research Center includes when it comes to what kind of work you can do. And I love Santa Fe. I'd, <laughs> I'd never uh, visited here before, let alone lived here. Um, so I think it's a really beautiful space and uh, our residences are some of the more peaceful locations I could imagine. Um, so I've been really enjoying just the environment and ecosystem out here. Yeah, the snow on the mountains this morning was so beautiful. I was like, <laughs> it's so picturesque, I know. And now the sun's like coming down and lighting up all the snow and it's yeah, it's all glistening and pretty. I know. I'm just like, if there's a place I want to be in quarantine, I think it's here at SAR. <laughs> I think so, too. Yeah, we have, it, uh, we have it pretty made up here. And so you briefly talked about, like, us working with Molly and Jen and Felicia. So can you tell people a little bit about, like, um, what departments you're working with here at SAR and the projects kind of within those departments? 
Definitely. Um, so we're working in um, three main departments primarily um, here at the Indian Arts Research Center. Um, so in terms of collections work, um, that tends to be a bit more hands-on. Um, like I was talking about a little bit that involves, you know, helping um, with labeling or collection visits. Um, when Venancio was on campus and we were able to um, help him access different textiles in the collection, that was really fun. And we learned how to, um, you know, properly roll and wrap and, um, you know, rehouse different uh, large scale rugs and textiles. Um, so it tends to be a lot more hands on in that regard. Um, I actually brought some show and tell um, in terms of some of the mounts I've been making at home for different jewelry pieces. Um, I'm so excited. Okay, let's do show and tell. <laughs> yeah, these are from, um, typically we wouldn't be able to take into our residence objects within the collection, um, but these are right. from the education collection. So people can handle them when they come visit the Indian Arts Research Center. Um, so we were able to take them into our residences and make some mounts for them. Um, so I don't know if we can see this one here, but I made a little house for it. That is so pretty. So beautiful, I know. And then I have some earrings here, bracelet. Oh, cool. Um, and then a couple of little rings, and things like that. So. Our, yeah, our skills are definitely, you know, we're, we're making it do here in our homes. Um, so those are some of the projects that we've been working on for collections. And then um, with education, that tends to be a bit more assisting with social media, um, writing up different posts about um, important events that are going on or artist talks. Um, and that also involves some um, e-museum curation, which has been... Uh, one of my more favorite parts, I suppose, in terms of just getting to know sort of um, what kinds of objects are in the collection and being able to reinterpret them and recontextualize them. Um, that's been a lot of fun. Um, and I think in terms of registration work, that's also been really helpful in terms of just getting to know the wide swath of objects that the Indian Arts Research Center holds. Um, we've been assisting um, with cleaning up and sort of um, filling out some of the object uh, records in the TMS museum system. Um, and that's been surprisingly interesting, uh, just, you know, getting to see how important registration work is to make collections accessible. Um, and then I suppose the last part of the internship is um, this year we're actually able to partner with uh, Mokna. And so um, Back a couple of weeks ago, Shandine and I were able to um, work in the intern and volunteer offices at Mokna um, and help with um, sort of drafting out longer form exhibit text for the traveling exhibit that's gonna be going up soon. Um, so yeah, those are some of the main sort of themes of projects that we've been working on so far. Okay, so I just want to mention in our chat, you got a lot of praise for your mount making skills. And they <laughs> honestly, they look great. They look very clean. Um, so Ian is asking a question. He said, are those mounts Tyvek or at the foam? Uh, the yeah, so they use both of those materials. Um, you have the epi foam on the bottom. Um, and they're called cavity mounts. I feel like Molly would be so proud of me for knowing this. Um, <laughs> so you have uh, carve out sort of the shape and the different forms um, of those pieces. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you end up sort of creating a little bit of a um, pocket for the piece, whether it's a bracelet or um, a necklace. Um, and then the Tyvek just helps sort of have a smooth, clean, um, unabrasive uh, space for the object to sit in and be safely housed. So yeah, they're actually very um, meditative to make, I found. Do you think that too? I think it's very relaxing to like tuck the Tyvek in and he has his little home and I'm like, oh, feels good. Yeah, there's something really therapeutic about it. I like that we're able to work on those at home. Yeah, me too. I think um, it's definitely been a challenge with collections, but we're making through, working, you know, in quarantine. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so transitioning to our next question. Um, and I think we might have glossed over this a little bit, but what has been your favorite aspect of being an Anne Wright intern so far? Mm, um, I guess, I mean, it's sort of a, uh, maybe a cop-out answer, but I really liked how diverse all of the projects are. Um, I think having a mix of hands-on um, and then having a bit more sort of research and writing based work um, really does sort of flesh out the days um, and also just gives us sort of um, many more tools in our future occupational toolbox. Um, but I think if I had to choose one, I do really enjoy the e-museum curation. Um, I'm currently sort of in the beginning stages of writing up tax um, for my particular exhibit. Um, and as someone who never grew up in the Southwest, I was really fascinated by, um, I guess, like bolo ties and sort of what those can represent. Um, and also how they're kind of taking off right now. You can see a lot of different young millennial celebrities wearing them. And that really fascinated me. Um, so I wanted to sort of, um, yeah, I guess like draw the attention back to um, some of the artists who sort of paved the way for the making of bolo ties, which did tend to be, um, you know, Pueblo and Diné artists uh, in the 40s and 50s. Um, so I've been working a little bit on that and kind of recontextualizing what those, um, why those works are important in today's context. Um, so yeah, the e-museum work is exciting and just being able to, um, yeah, go through the collections virtually, of course, um, but still see uh, all of the incredible works that we're able to house and care for here. That's been, it's been pretty great. And we kind of already mentioned, but I think um, for our viewers, Emily's super interested in curation. So really keep your eyes peeled for her e-museum um, curatorial <laughs> exhibit. It's gonna be on our SAR website. I'm honestly not quite sure when, um, but I think in the new year, 2021. Um, and also I just, I love how you picked bolo ties because they're super trendy right now. And I think I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I should think it should be fun. <laughs> yeah, in doing some of my research for it, it seems like, like even Versace right now is coming out with like a bolo tie, like yeah. high option. Yeah, so it's really taking off. Um, so yeah, I'm interested in sort of uh, looking at that kind of um, relationship too of how bolo ties have sort of broken into, you know, this highfalutin level of fashion. Yeah, that's crazy. I feel like we should have, we should get that for our collection here at SAR. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so um, we kind of, I keep saying this, but we kind of talked about this, about part of the internship being with Anne Ray is you do kind of like an outside internship. Um, in this fall, you've been working at IIA Mokna downtown in the plaza. Um, and um, we are working on labels for a traveling exhibit. So would you mind talking more about that um, and kind of the opportunity to be a SAR employee, but also um, go off site? Sure, yeah. Um, so that project is really exciting. Um, it's actually, so with Mokno, we're working on expanding some um, exhibit text for an exhibit that was already up, um, but Mokno will now be able to travel it to different institutions um, across the country and sort of share a lot of these works. Um, and the works are primarily from um, the early students at IAIA um, in the sort of mid 60s and early 70s. Um, and I think the collection of works that we're able to sort of um, think about and write some text on um, are really important because they sort of laid the groundwork for a lot of the sort of contemporary native abstract art that we're seeing today. Um, and I think that history isn't often talked about in sort of the realm of um, abstract American art. So uh, yeah, it's important to sort of be able to work on this project and um, also hopefully fingers crossed at some point, be able to help with the interviewing of some of the artists um, whose works are going to be in this traveling exhibit. Um, with COVID 
those interviewing plans are always tentative. Um, but Shandine and I have been sort of uh, helping draft up different interview questions and um, yeah, sort of asking questions about the artists lives, but also the different inspirations behind their works and um, different techniques and styles. Um, so it's been it's been a lot of fun getting to um, sort of think about those um, IIA early artists, um, and then also being able to work um, here at the Indian Arts Research Center, um, where there is more of a um, sort of historic context to many of the works. Though the Indian Arts Research Center also um, does support a lot of Native artists um, who are both established and emerging. So um, it was also cool to get to work with Venancio and sort of see how contemporary Native artists are able to use the collections. That's always neat to see. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I love the range. I think that, you know, the internship here offers um, and at II, it's really cool that we may possibly interview um, living artists, which is something that I think, you know, um, it's kind of like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, and I also want to mention that we do have a comment um, that Emily is very awesome. She's way ahead of her time, <laughs> very professional and knowledgeable, which I totally agree with. And that was for <laughs> check us off sooner. So thank you for the comment. Um, so um, along with II um, working at Mokna, we've also been taking continuing education classes. Um, do you want to chat about what those kind of classes were um, and being a student um, outside of, you know, um, undergraduate? Um, yes, so we ended up taking two different continuing ed classes. Um, and I think this was the first year they were offering them virtually. Right? So um, that was sort of lucky on our end to be able to get in on those. Um, one was grant writing for the arts. Um, which gave me sort of uh, a wide breadth of appreciation for just how complicated I think grant writing can be, um, but also how crucial it can be in terms of um, getting funding for different projects, um, especially for nonprofit institutions. Um, so I think just having that groundwork, those foundational skills from that class will be helpful moving forward. Um, and then the other class we took was International Indigenous Arts. Um, and that was a really amazing sort of quick class. Um, I think it's hard, it would be hard for any professor to talk about um, all of the different kinds of Indigenous arts that are out there in you know one hour lunch sessions. Um, but our professor did a really great job of sort of distilling down um, you know, different areas of the world and talking about key movements and art forms. Um, and I think that, yeah, that was a really interesting and fascinating class, especially because she got to talk about, um, yeah, indigenous arts in India. And that's, as someone who's half Indian, I think that was um, super important for me to learn a bit more about. Um, and I think, yeah, creating those sort of cross-cultural connections um, globally with different artists is something that I would like to do in the future. Um, so that was an important class, I think, just for sort of um, broadening out what uh, Indigenous arts looks like beyond just a United States context. Um, so that was a very cool class. Um, and we'll be taking a um, exhibit text writing course coming up next week too. And I think that will sort of um, help fine tune our writing skills and hopefully will help us with our museum <laughs> exhibit text. Yeah, and I just wanna shout out that Emily is already an amazing writer as her coworker, I can attest to this. Um, <laughs> we have Robert joining our live. So hi, Robert. Um, Ian also says shout out to Professor Amber Don Barrow, who I think we both really love. Um, and Emily, if you ever one day curate like a global indigenous or like Indian show, that would be so rad. I thought of that when you were talking. I was like, <laughs> we, we could, could curate, even we could make it happen. <laughs> yeah, 
I think that would, because there's just like so many intersections that, I don't know, just don't get talked about. So that'd be really cool. Um, we have a question in the chat. Has the work that you've been doing at the IARC made you consider any changes in the career you thought you'd have? Hmm. Um, that is a good question. I, I think I've been surprised maybe at how much I enjoy and find important um, registration work uh, mm -hmm. in the museum field. That wasn't necessarily something that I had um, given too much thought to before coming into this internship. Um, but that's been one of the benefits of sort of learning about how key the different facets of collections work can be, um, or museum work, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I think the registration work is really uh, crucial for accessibility when it comes to different artists or scholars or researchers coming into um, the Indian Arts Research Center. Um, yeah, making sure that uh, the tracking of objects is well done and clean and concise, um, making sure the records are, um, you know, up to date and have all the information needed. Um, I was surprised by how um, crucial that field is and also how much uh, it can kind of be therapeutic to work in TMS and um, sort of go through data entry, different things like that. So I still really do enjoy curatorial work and I think that is something I'd like to um, maybe dig into a little bit more, but registration work is also extremely important. And I think I gave it enough credit before stepping into this internship. And I think um, for anyone watching who is kind of interested in the Anne Ray internship, that's kind of the beauty of it, is that like we get experience in so many departments, which is pretty unique. Um, and Emily, if I and remembering correctly, you've not had like a position in registration before. I think your focus has been on curation, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, right. yeah. And so it's just so fascinating to like work, you know, and just um, understand from maybe a different perspective how important like another department is, um, which is really rad about the job. Right. Yeah, I think so. I think sometimes when you go into different roles, they can be um, siphoned off from one another. But with this internship, um, it is just so interdisciplinary, which is, like you were saying, one of the main benefits to it is you really do get a taste of um, all the different kinds of work you can do within the museum field. Yes. Um, so now kind of transitioning to questions about Santa Fe. Um, for anyone watching, Emily is an avid hiker and nature connoisseur. So for any of us <laughs> locals in Santa Fe, um, what are trails you recommend for hiking and for running? Because you're also a runner. Yeah. Um, well, I guess in terms of running, I mostly just, we live in such a beautiful part of Santa Fe um, that I mostly just go running around the neighborhood um, with my mask, of course, you know, following the Santa Fe guidelines. Um, but I will say that when I first moved out here, the elevation and all the hills took some getting used to. Um, coming in from Oklahoma, where it's just flat <laughs> all the time, uh, my legs were not ready for the altitude. Um, but yeah, just running around this part of town has been really beautiful um, and getting to know the little side streets and um, the dirt roads has been uh, just kind of fun and interesting and seeing all the uh, gorgeous houses out here. Um, but in terms of trails, yeah, I do try to go hiking every weekend. Um, I went to Hermit Peak a couple of weekends ago and that just felt really timely to be hiking to a peak that a hermit used to live in because we're all kind of hermits these days. <laughs> um, I only saw one other person on the trail. So it was really, um, yeah, kind of out in the boonies, but gorgeous um, and some really great vistas. Um, and then, yeah, I also, the Sandias are really beautiful. Um, and then the Santa Fe National Forest is very close to where we live. Um, and they've got some really beautiful long trails out there too. Um, so Santa Fe Baldy was a really fun one as well. I would recommend it. I was sore the next day, but I think <laughs> it like, makes you feel that much more accomplished, I think, after the fact. 
yeah the elevation the mask I feel like it's a true workout which is pretty, <laughs> pretty great considering you know we're always at home right yeah we kind of need it we need like the amped up workout to even out our home days mm -hmm. um I also know that you are a thrifter um and you're interested in fashion so for any of us Santa Fe locals do you have recommendations for like cool places to go um, yeah, I, so I guess I can sometimes be like a classic thrifter. So I do think, just, you know, your run of the mill Goodwill or Salvation Army can have some of the best deals and um, can be the most exciting when you do find something that speaks to you. Um, but there is uh, that cat thrift store, and I think they have two locations in town. And um, their stores are a bit more sort of, um, for lack of a better word, curated. Um, so yeah, they tend to sort of go through and um, pick out particular pieces to sell. And I think the proceeds for those stores do go towards the Santa Fe Animal Shelter. So you kind of feel a good shopping there as well and helping out um, the local animals in town. Um, and a couple of weekends ago, there was a pop-up thrifting event um back before the city shut down and uh that was really cool it was run by a bunch of um young women here in town and um, who came up from albuquerque and i think that was called thanks it's vintage um they might have an account on instagram i'm not sure um but that was uh yeah that was fun and just a nice excuse to get out and see some interesting old clothes so we have a comment in our chat. Um, keep up the great work, Emily and SAR, your Oklahoma friends. Thank you for all that you do for Indian country. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> that is so sweet. Yeah. Um, I'm sure as like an Oklahoma moving here to New Mexico, it's different. I hear Oklahoma is like flat, but never been. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, actually, Oklahoma has a more of a diverse, I think, terrain or ecosystem than people give it credit for. I was in sort of south central Oklahoma, which was a bit flatter, but we did have, you know, a couple of mountain ranges, like an hour to the west. Um, and then you have the Ozarks not too far to the east. So um, I was actually surprised by the beauty of Oklahoma. So it's just a different kind of beauty out here, I guess. Mm, yeah. Um, was there like, were you, are there like lots of trails in Oklahoma? Is that like a very hike, a hiking destination, I guess? I don't think so. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the town that I lived in, which was Ada, it had a, a little park. Um, so that was pretty, it was nice to sort of walk around and go running around. Um, I had a lot of picnics with my friends over the summer this past year. Um, but yeah, for like proper hiking, you kind of had to drive an hour or two to find a good trail. Whereas here, you know, we like step out of our houses and we're already kind of right by Adelaide. So we're pretty lucky. Yeah, I think I totally agree. We're, I'm very thankful. We're super lucky. Um, so we're kind of winding down here, but I still have a few more questions. Um, so kind of circling back to more professional stuff at Stanford, um, you also study creative writing and as a writer, um, what does writing mean to you? And also how does that kind of intersect with museum work? Mm. Um, yeah, I did study creative writing. Um, I took, you know, probably just as many English courses as I did anthropology courses, just because I do love reading and writing and analyzing works and thinking about, you know, how authors create and craft their stories. I think that's um, super fascinating. Um, and I suppose I have my own small little writing practice. I try to write a little bit every day over breakfast. Um, and I think just for when you look back on writing that you did, you know, even like a couple of months down the line, um, you can get a feel for the different themes that were on your mind or um, different ideas you had. And so I think writing can be sort of important for that sort of tracking of where you're at in life too. Um, 
which I've just found to be interesting to kind of keep that, um, that record for myself. Um, but yeah, writing is, I think, pretty crucial to museum work, especially um, curatorial work, um, in terms of just making writing um, accessible and concise, um, but also, um, yeah, you know, being able to add a bit of your own flourish to it when you are writing, you know, like intro exhibit text or something like that. Um, it is, yeah, it's interesting to sort of do all of the research for a particular project and then have to narrow it down to, you know, 200 words or 250 words. And I think that's where um, being able to, um, yeah, be a bit more concise and um, narrow down your points is um, pretty important. So, yeah, I think writing and creative writing in English, um, they kind of feed their way into any field, but it seems like with museum work, especially in curatorial work, they do kind of go hand in hand. Have you found that too? Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I think in curation, like, while objects are kind of telling a story, it's also like label text job to enhance that story a little bit more. Um, yeah, so as we're winding down, I just want to encourage people to, if you have any questions for Emily, um, feel free to just enter them in our chat box. Um, I have a few more. So you recently shared a picture of um, some of your moccasins for SAR Rock Your Mock social media event. Um, can you talk more about the pair of moccasins that you shared? Sure. And in case anyone didn't see them, I actually brought them out. Um, so it's these moccasins here. They are so beautiful. Oh my God. Thank you. Yeah, I do think my mom's watching, so I'm sure well, she'll- Well, hi, Emily's mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because you made them, right. She's the- Yeah, the she is an artist. Um, yeah, my mother, Margaret Santanum, made me the moccasins um, along with a Choctaw ribbon dress. Um, she beaded up a um, belt as well, um, and then created a bandolier bag for me. And I actually have a couple of those too, so. Yay. Um, each of these little buckles she hand beaded. I love those colors. Wow, that is so pretty. Red's my favorite color, so she made sure to incorporate them. And that's one of the Choctaw designs. Um, so it was all for my um, graduation from um, Stanford for the native graduation. I'm sure Dartmouth had one too. Um, but yeah, my mom went all out and making my full dress and regalia and accessories. Um, and for the bandolier bag, oh my god, that is so beautiful! And one of my favorite animals is the deer, which is uh, Ithi in uh, Choctaw or Chickasaw. Um, and then because I'm also half Indian, she included some. Um, different Indian designs as well to sort of make it like fully me, um, but still incorporating, you know, a lot of um, traditional Choctaw and Chickasaw designs. Um, so she is a pretty incredible artist in her own right. Um, and I was very lucky to have her um, make me such beautiful pieces for my graduation. And when I was working at the Cultural Center, I was able to, um, you know, wear some of these items more regularly for different festivals and events. Um, but I do hope that I can sport them out here sometime, maybe in the spring, maybe if we have a in-person event at some point. Yeah, um, I feel like that bag would be perfect for that like crossover exhibit, the hypothetical one that I want you to do. Yes. That, is, like, that is so beautiful. And in our comments, we are also Robert, says absolutely gorgeous um we have a nice job and lots of hearts because oh my god those are so pretty um oh my god. <laughs> can you does your mom have a place to share her artwork you know she has an instagram um, i've been telling her to get an etsy site set up for months now yes um, she still hasn't done that but every year the choctaw nation has their tushkahoma festival um in tushkahoma um, Oklahoma 
So um, she would set up her booths there, I think, for the past couple of years. Um, oh, my mom just wrote that crossover exhibit has to happen. <laughs> she yes. wants to be featured in it. Um, but yeah, so her Instagram, if you do want to check out some of the work that she does, I should know it off the hand, um, is Mark Mom 5 and Emma's um, mom should totally set up an Etsy. I would buy stuff. I'm sure a lot of us I, would. Yeah, I would buy stuff too. I mean, she's, yeah. <laughs> and my grandma does work, artworks too. And, um, you know, is an artist in her own right as well. She made some of the different items for my sister's native graduation when my sister graduated college. So, yeah, they're a pretty dynamic duo. Oh, I love that. Um, <laughs> So our kind of like last question, since we're a bit over time, is um, one that could be filled with anxiety, but, you know, we're not going to take it there. Um, <laughs> what do you want to do in the future? Um, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Mm, that is a hefty question, Shanti. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess it sort of circles back to a lot of what we've talked about in terms of my interest in um, both creative writing and curatorial work. I think being able to sort of bridge those two um, and put different underrepresented artists and writers and thinkers in conversation um, in a visual format or platform would be really exciting, um, especially considering sort of how museums are broadening out a lot of their programming these days um, in terms of sort of trying to be spaces for more sort of performances and, um, you know, lectures and readings and sites of gathering. Um, so I think I'll have to stay tuned and um, keep sort of checking out um, how museums are growing and adapting to, um, you know, different forms of serving their communities. But I think um, being able to, yeah, bridge different um, sort of minority writers and artists um, both visually and maybe, you know, in an online platform would be pretty exciting. But for right now, I'm very excited to be uh, here as an NRA intern and um, just learning from all of the great people that we've been working with. Yeah, I love that answer. I feel like I'm super excited to see like 10 years from now that question. And I'm sure a lot of our viewers are too. Um, so Oh, we also got a comment in the chat that said, thanks, Emily, grandma. So I'm assuming that's your grandma. Hi, Emily. That's my grandma. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I just want to say a big thank you to you, Emily, for um, letting me chat with you um, and kind of opening up about SAR and your life. Um, and also, thanks so much to all of our viewers who are joining. We really appreciate it. Um, it's kind of nerve wracking doing a live event. I've never done one before. So i um, super thankful for everyone's interaction. Um, so for our SAR Live artists, we're kind of gonna take a break, but keep up with us on Instagram um, and Facebook to see what we're doing in 2021. Um, am, I, am I forgetting anything? I like don't wanna stop the stream. But um, we just thank the internet for not kicking us off this time. <laughs> yes, I, I, yes, I'm so happy that this is a continual stream. Oh, Ian says mahalo, mahalo, Ian. Um, so, oh yeah, Emily's mom says excellent interview. Um, thank you guys. So <laughs> we're just never I just, sign off now. Just keep reading comments. Yeah, I'm just like I could keep <laughs> doing this. Um. But everyone, thank you so much. Please stay safe and take care of yourselves and your families. And we'll see you guys soon. So bye. Thank you, Shandine. Yeah, of course. Bye. <laughs>